Today we'll be setting up an Azure calling plan number in Omnichannel. So we're in the customer service admin center. If you go to customer support and then channels and phone numbers, we'll see that we can add a new number through the button at the top. So we'll click it. While we wait for it to fetch available countries, I'll go ahead and tell you that the only country available through this wizard is the United States. But if you require another country, which Azure supports, you can go directly to the Azure portal and your Azure communication services resource and purchase a number there and then sync it into Omnichannel. So for the United States, we have toll free and geographic numbers. So we're going to get a geographic number, which uses local area codes. Um, note that SMS is not available for these numbers, only toll free numbers. And we'll receive and make calls, select our state, Select our city, and then select the area code that we want our number to have. So it has found us this phone number, and we can go ahead and purchase. We'll have 15 minutes to purchase, and then purchasing will take a few minutes. Now that we have a phone number, we can go ahead and click done. So you'll see that this number is ready for setup and we can choose to set it up in a number of different ways, but we're gonna go over work stream. So we'll add a new work stream here and go through our setup wizard. So we'll first need to name it and then we know that it is a voice work stream. And we'll see that our work distribution mode is push, which means incoming calls will be assigned automatically. And we also have the option to choose a fallback queue. I'm just gonna use the default queue, but you can choose another queue or create a new queue to be used for fallback routing in the case that none of your uh, routing rules matched. So on our work stream page here, we'll need to set up voice. So we'll need to name our channel. And we'll need to choose one of our available phone numbers. So we'll choose the one that we just purchased. And then we'll need to add a primary language. So by default, it's set to English United States, but we have several languages available to choose from, which are documented in our learn documentation. We have Hold music and wait music. Hold music is to play while a customer is on hold and wait music is to play while a customer is waiting in a queue. We have several different defaults to choose from. We can also choose the voice profile that'll give automated messages and will also be the profile that your PVA bot speaks with. Um, so each bot has a different tone. Um, so you can choose Christopher, which will sound more male. Or you can choose Cora, which will sound more female. Additionally, we have here a post call survey. So we can choose here to add a voice bot to survey the customer at the end of the call. If we turn this on, we see that we can pick a bot. So we'll go through and choose one, the Contoso bot, and then save and close. We can also add an additional language. Uh, what we call a secondary language. And this is if you need to use one work stream to service different bots of different languages or different customers of different languages. In our behaviors, we can choose to turn on customer wait time, which will notify customers of their position in queue or their average wait time. Channel operating hours, we can turn on um, and decide when we want our channel to be active. So if it's outside of operating hours, when customers call in, they'll hear an automated message that says, you are outside of the channel operating hours and possibly you can customize this message to give a time to call back. We can also choose transcription and recording. We have different settings for that. The start setting is set to automatic and allowing agents to pause and resume is also automatically set. Um, you can customize automated messages. Um, 
going through that wizard. You can also transfer to external phone number and Microsoft Teams user, and also turn on authentication, which is currently in preview. So we will now create our channel. Now that our voice channel is created, we'll go back to our work stream and we will start setting up our routing rules. Um, so if we look, we are already directed to the fallback queue we selected on uh, setup, which is a default queue, but we're gonna go ahead and create a rule set to go to a different queue. And we have to name it. And then click create. Well, we also have to name the specific rule. So if we go down, we can choose from either row, group, or related entity. So I'm going to go through related entities in this demo because those are usually pretty helpful. Um, so if I pick phone call engagement context, this will give me information about the phone call, like who called, what their phone number was. Um, so I'm going to go ahead and set this to identify my phone number. So if the customer phone number equals my cell phone number, then I want to route to the queue that is dedicated to me, um, which is going to be a test queue. Okay, so now that that's saved and ready, we can go back to our work stream and we'll see that we can add a bot here, an IVR bot. And then if we go over to our work distribution, you can see that voice work streams are always pushed, that our capacity is profile based and we can choose which profile. We can also block capacity for wrap-up, set allow presence. We can also change our default skill matching algorithm. In the advanced settings, we can change the way notifications come to agents and also change the way the tabs show to agent through the sessions panel.